Hello everyone, welcome back to our channel Magnic Software. So last video we have seen about looping concepts and we are discussing looping statements in that we have discussed about how we can work with while loop and do while loop. Okay. In this video I would like to discuss about for loop. Okay. How the syntax will be there in for loop and we can see the program. Okay. So for loop. So this is the third one in looping for loop. So what is this syntax to represent for loop? Okay. So here first of all you need to write down initialization. And next condition. And next you have to give here updation. Updation is nothing but either it is an increment or decrement. Condition is nothing but i less than or equal to 10 or i greater than or equal to 1. Okay. i less than or equal to 20. i greater than or equal to 20. So whatever the condition you want to write, you need to write down the condition. In the initialization part, you need to initialize the values. Int i is equal to 1, i is equal to 2, i is equal to 0 or j or k. Whatever the variable you are having, you need to initialize in the initialization part. Okay. So then, whatever the program logic you want to write down, the logic should be represented in the statements. Okay. This is the syntax to represent your for loop. What we can represent here? For loop. See, for is a keyword which can contain three parts. One is initialization. Second one is condition. Then you are writing updation. And whatever the program logic you are having, the program logic should be represented within these two brackets. This is the syntax. Now, we can see for loop. Okay. Uh, by using for loop, how we can print 1 to 10 numbers. Okay. So, write a Java program. Say I am writing a program. Write a Java program. To print 1 to 10 numbers. By using for loop. By using for loop. So let us see how we need to write down the logic. This is the question. Okay. So program. How we are going to write down the program. First of all you need to take class class name. F example. Anything you can take it as a class name. But while you are saving the file. You have to save with f example dot java okay now you need to write down the main method so public static void main method main of string args what you are writing here string args so next step we are going to write down here for loop so for off so you need to write down like this so for off int i is equal to 1. See guys, actually initialization will be done after the main method but in for loop what is the first part we are having initialization. So that is the reason I am going initializing int i is equal to 1. Okay. Now i less than or equal to 10 and you need to write down here i plus plus. Okay. So this is initialization and this is condition and this is updation. Either it will be uh, incrementing or either it will be decrement operator. Any operator we can use based on your requirement. Okay. Now if see here I want to print i value. System dot out dot print ln of. So every time you need to print the i value. So this is the logic to implement your for loop. Okay. So, how the output you will get? What is the output you will get here? So, in while loop, first of all you need to initialize the value, then check the condition, then uh, if the condition is satisfied, it can print the value, then it can increment the value. Okay. But uh, coming to here, um, 
we what we have to do means first initialization right so you need to take here i is equal to 1 so 1 less than or equal to what is the condition here you are given 10 so 10 condition is satisfied now if this condition is satisfied you need to print the value so that is the reason it was printing i value okay so what is the i value we got here 1 so why because i value is initialized to 1 so next step you need to perform updation, incrementation. i is equal to 1 plus 1. So 2, 2 less than or equal to 10, condition satisfied. So it was printing 2 value. Again, i is equal to 2 plus 1, 3, 3 less than or equal to 10, condition satisfied. So it was printing 3 value. So like that, i is equal to up to which condition you need to execute the logic. So if this condition is satisfied, the iteration should be stopped. Okay. So now I value will be 9. So 9 plus 1. So 10. So 10 less than or equal to 10. Condition is satisfied. It was printing the 10 value. See guys. Actually everybody can think that the for loop can contain compulsory initialization, compulsory condition and compulsory updation part. But we can write down like this also. See. In for loop, I am removing initialization part. It was uh, containing condition part and updation part. You are leaving this place as empty. Okay. Or empty or you can move uh, or you can write down like this. Int i is equal to 1. So, here you are doing initialization but you are not doing initialization in the for loop. So, this will be also uh, another way you can write down your for loop. Okay. And no need of writing incrementation in the for loop. Okay. See, observe clearly guys. I am explaining here very clearly. So, the for loop does not contain mandatory. It is not mandatory to initialize the value here. To write down the increment of operator in the for loop. Either you can write down int i is equal to 1 before for loop. And you can write down this increment operator here also within the for loop and the for loop should contain only condition it is also possible okay now let us see here i am giving here incrementation operator okay if you are not writing any condition here that means you see here i was giving empty for loop so i was not writing any condition here then it will be considered it as an infinity loop what is the output you are going to get here? Infinite uh, loop. Why? Because you are initializing the value. You are given incrementing operator. But you are not giving any condition. So that is the reason the loop will be executed. So you are getting an output called infinite loop. So in this way we can work with for loops. Okay. Now I want to show you one more example. Okay. I want to show you one more example on for loop. Okay. So, write a Java program to print factorial of a given number. So, let us see here. Write a Java program to print factorial of a given number. Given number. Okay. So, this is the question I am having. How we have to write down the logic for factorial of a given number. Okay. Now, first of all, class, you need to take fact example. You need to write down the main method. So, public static void main of string x void main of string x. Okay. So, next we need to take here, initially you need to give fact value as 1. Why? Because every time, 5 factorial means what? For suppose, factorial means what? If you are taking 5 factorial, 5 into 4 into 3 into 2 into 1. Okay? Am I right or wrong? Or we can find out 1 into 2 into 3 into 4 into 5 factorial. So, like that we can find out. Okay? So, initially, I am initializing, you can take any variable here, just you can take simply f also. Variable name can be anything, any variable, okay? 
fat equal to 1. What I am going to take here? Fat equal to 1. I am initializing fat value to 1. Okay. Now, you have to write down the condition for of int i equal to 1. First of all, you are initializing i value to 1. Okay. So, i less than or equal to 5. I need to find out 5 factorial. So, that is the reason I am giving here 5. If you are taking 10 factorial, then you need to mention here 10. Okay. So, now, I would like to take here i plus plus. What is the logic you need to print here? Fat equal to fat into every time i. Okay. You are multiplying with i value. This is the logic. So, now system dot out dot print ln of. You need to print the factorial value every time when the iteration is going on. So, how many times you have to close the loop? So, we are having three flower brackets. So, you are closing for loop, you are closing main method and you are closing the class. Okay. Now, let us see how the logic is executing here. See, while going to the interviews, explanation is very, very important. Okay. So, if you are writing any logic means, they will ask you the explanation. So, let us see what is the explanation for this program. Okay. Explanation is very, very important, guys. So, how many iterations we need to perform? 5 iterations. Why? Because I have given uh, less than or equal to 5 conditions. So, that is the reason we need to perform 5 iterations. Okay. Now, I would like to take initially i value 1. So, 1 less than or equal to 5. And initially fact value 1. So, fact equal to 1. Okay. Now, what is the logic we are having? So, fact equal to fat into i. So, what is the fat value? 1. What is the i value? 1. So, 1 into 1 is equal to 1. Now, iteration 1 is completed. Now, you, to, you need to perform iteration 2. Okay. So, now i is equal to 1 plus 1. 2. So, 2 less than or equal to 5. Condition satisfied. And fat value you need to take it as again 1. Why? Because 1 into 1 you are getting again 1 value. Okay, now you need to perform, see here, I am writing here only, fat equal to, what is the previous fat value we got? 1. So, 1 into, what is the i value we got now? i value will be incremented to 2. So, 1 into 2, so that equals to 2. Okay, so next, i is equal to 2 plus 1, 3. So, 3 less than or equal to 5. Condition satisfied. So, let us see. Fat equal to, okay. Now, what is the factorial value is updated? Here, the value will be changed to 2. So, now, fat equal to 2 into 3 is a 6, okay. So, next, i value will be incremented to 3 plus 1, 4. So, 4 less than or equal to 5 condition satisfied. So, fat equal to uh, what is the value we got? 2 into 3. 6. So, fat equal to 6 into 4 is 24. So, here the value will be 24. Now, i is equal to 4 plus 1. So, that equals to 5. So, 5 less than or equal to 5. Condition satisfied. What is the fat value it was updated? So, what is the fat value we got here? 24. So, here you need to place 24. So, implies, so fat equal to 24 into 5. So, that equals to 120. So, what is the final answer we got? 120. And see here guys, when you are writing system dot out dot print ln within the loop, then for every iteration it will print the values like 2, 6, 24 and 120. If you are writing system dot out dot print ln after the loop, then directly it can print 120 value. Okay. So this is all about for loop. In coming videos I will discuss about conditional statements. Okay. Thank you for watching. Please like, share and subscribe Magic Software.